I believe we are live, which is great. And we've got some more people joining us. So um, uh, let me just first um, introduce you all to the Midlife Retreat. My name's Kay Newton. And the Midlife Retreat is all about taking time to be on your own, um, relax, rejuvenate, put your feet up, close uh, the door to the outside world, and be inspired by my next guest. My, my guest today is all the way from India, Ekka Kapoor. I'm going to introduce her in a minute, but before that, both of us are going to take two deep breaths. Are you ready, Ekka? Yes, I'm just saying hello to Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready? Let's take one deep breath in. Yeah. And let's okay. have another one. Okay. That's wonderful. Now today I couldn't miss talking to this most amazing lady. She was um, such a great inspiration to me when I went over to New Delhi over a year ago um, to the WEF conference and she was a great hostess, invited me into her home and was such a, a great delight to be with. Um, she actually made me want to go back to New Delhi uh, this year. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Um, I had serious problems with my uh, internet connection and Wi-Fi again today, so I've trudged up the beach for an hour. I'm now at Marani Beach Cottages. I'm sitting in the reception area, so it's quite noisy here. There's lots of people to and froing, and the telephones are always going, so I apologise immediately for all the noise at the back. Um, and now I want to introduce you to Aika because this is really important. She sent me a, a, a lovely little bio. So Aika... Aika <clears throat> Excuse me, Eka Kapoor is a lifestyle journalist and editorial consultant based in New Delhi. She has recently launched Ishi, a monthly magazine about the extraordinary stories of women around the world. It has been associated with fashion and lifestyle media in India for about 15 years, and she contributes to some of India's most respected magazines and newspapers as a writer or consulting editor. She is the mother of two grown-up daughters and a wife to a well-known political writer in India. Welcome. I'm so pleased to have you with us at the uh, um, Midlife and Retreat, Aitka. Thank you so much for having me and for thinking of me. Now, I know that you've met Pat. Pat, Pat was with, uh, with you in New Delhi yes. this year. Yes. Um, and I know that you know Julia and, and Billet. Yes. And everybody's saying, it's, Vanessa says it's a great magazine. So we've got some really nice people with you with us today. I'm sure they're going to have lots of questions for you. But but my first question to you is, tell us a little bit about um, the the young girl growing up. What what inspired her to be interested in the written word? Okay, I was um, so I was. We lived an expat life. We were Indians living in Dubai. And at that time, it was a small town. It was a small community. And we were further ghettoized in the sense that we stuck to our own kind of people, which was Indians. And uh, I, was, uh, well, I was always a good writer when I was in school. And I was part of the editorial board of my school magazine. I used to write for the local newspapers. Uh, and somewhere in my high school, I, uh, I was in a girl's school. I, you know, I decided I wanted to grow up and uh, have my own women's magazine. And it was, it's, it's a dream that has really been there since high school. And I later joined a girls college in Delhi. And once again, I was the editor of the, of the magazine in, in the college. And uh, yeah, much later, I joined uh, uh, the Indian media. I, in fact, I got my first full-time job at the age of 30. And uh, that's when uh, I actually joined uh, the media. I rose very quickly, and I was the editor of various magazines, fashion, luxury, women-related uh, issues. Uh, but there was always this, um, this desire to start something uh, that was inspiring. And uh, also because I've been part of the fashion media, and I realized that uh, a lot of what we show people is not the truth. And everything is glossed over, everything is photoshopped. And, uh, you know, for instance, there was, uh, there was this time when I was the editor of a women's magazine. Um, and my daughter said, uh, you know, why don't you feature your own story? And I said, no, I can't be in, my own, in, in the magazine. And she's like, why? And I said, I'm too fat and old. And that's when I realized that, uh, you know, we've created a monster. So we've created 
something uh, that is so unrealistic and people have uh, a certain expectation of what a woman uh, what a, a beautiful woman is supposed to look like or what an accomplished woman is supposed to do uh, that we don't even fit in our in our own product you know yeah. so uh, i always wanted to create something that's about real women in which i don't need to photoshop the pictures and you know women can just be who they are and feel very comfortable in their skin and every woman should be able to feel that you know what i can be in this magazine you know and uh, really that space has always been missing because uh, necessarily women's magazines in india are about glamour and beauty and fashion and things that are really exclusive and unachievable uh, so i wanted to make it more relatable i want to make the woman who's reading it feel that i have a story too and i have something to share and i can inspire other people with my story and i really give them that platform to do that so that's how it all started and it's it's been a lifelong dream and i remember the date it was may 3rd this year and my husband said and i'd started a company and i was you know, we were just lying in bed and i'm telling him so i started a company but what does my company make you know and he says what do you want to do with it and i said well the only thing i ever wanted to do is to start a women's magazine and he said all right what's stopping you and i was like don't be silly how can i start a women's magazine you know i'm a i'm you know i'm i'm a journalist and i i don't have those kind of resources and and he's like just start it you know the resources will come so yeah i took a deep breath and i just started it <laughs> I think I think what you've done is absolutely amazing, um, and I, I love the magazine. Um, I think Vanessa's put something down which I, you know, I agree with completely. She said it's wonderful that you show authentic women, um, yes. and that yeah. you know, the magazine is is like Ritu says, it's like speaking from your heart, and and that's I think in today's world so important. I had a question I wanted to ask you in relation to your two daughters because I remember. When I met you in New Delhi, you said that you know you were very concerned about what you did publish, and as in you felt if it was to do with the fashion, your daughters had to agree with you before you published it. Does that still run true, or are you, do you just publish it anyway, whether they like what you're saying or not? No, it's very. I I learn a lot from my daughters, really, and they are my they are my teachers because the way they use technology, the way they read, is very different from the way we are used to. and they are the future and i have been blessed to to have two daughters because uh, by observing them i can actually uh, tailor my content to the next generation so for instance the format of the magazine uh, you know i have made it very easy to read it online i've made it uh, a, a, the print edition is only an a4 size uh, in fact um, let me show it to you i've just got the latest issue right here um so it's it's a small magazine and that's deliberate because i wanted to be easy to read on the phone so that's what it looks like and you can it's probably a mirror image but yeah and uh, it, it's it's smaller than uh, regular magazines and also the whole idea of having a website and having a digital magazine it's all born because of watching my children's consumption patterns they have not picked up a magazine on the stands i don't think ever in their life and i don't think they ever will and they say yeah. that if we do have 200 rupees to spend we're not going to spend it on a magazine for sure they'd rather have a cup of coffee with a friend so um you know so their their priorities have changed these days and i do uh, look at their patterns i look at their lifestyle i look at their choices uh, you know the kind of uh, the way they uh, entertain themselves or the kind of friends they have or the kind of things they do with their friends you know so it's very different from our life and I like to think I'm a very open mother, and I, I'm very liberal by Indian mother standards. Uh, so you know, so they're very open with me. They do share a lot with me, and it, it also used to bother me about you know how they would look at the magazines I'm producing and the TV shows that they watch. It, it used to bother me that it was giving them a lot of complexes about themselves. Uh, especially when they were in that early adolescence, you know, twelve, thirteen, very impressionable age. and it it used to uh, hurt me that you know they would come and say you know what i'm too dark i'm not fair enough or i'm too fat for wearing this or you know it, it used to hurt me and i used to work in these fashion magazines at that time and uh, i i really felt that we're harming a lot of uh, you know young women in india they have this uh, benchmark in their head which is which is really only 2% of the population can achieve that that level of 
uh, that physical, uh, you know, uh, whatever. You, it's a level, it's a kind of a parameter of beauty that's not even real. It doesn't exist. So wh who are we to define and to tell a young woman that, you know what, you're not beautiful. You know, you don't fit into that. So sorry, you know, you, you just can't get there. So it used to hurt me. And I think uh, I've been very open with them over the years. And I think now they're a little more, they're, they're adults now. And I think they're sensible and they're balanced to a large extent. But I do feel that being part of the media that has glamorized women's bodies and that has painted them to look like mannequins, uh, I think we have, we have harmed our own selves in the long run. And I think uh, your comment about the, the, the harm, it, it's not just uh, India. I think magazines worldwide have this issue yes. with uh, image yeah. and, and women. Um, yeah. And I, I love that, the fact that you're changing that. Vanessa's asked a question and, and anybody who's listening in, if you've got any questions, please just put them into the chat and we can pick them yeah. up as we're talking. Yeah, Vanessa, Vanessa I can says, your question. Yeah. yeah, she says, what age group is your new magazine for? It's for anybody who can read. It's for any age group. Uh, I have a young girl, uh, you know, in fact, Ritu's daughter, who's just 17 years old and who's a scuba diving uh, instructor. I mean, she's trained to be a scuba diving instructor. And uh, I also have uh, women in 60s and 70s. It's essentially any woman who has an interesting story that other women can be inspired from. You know, it can be anybody. It, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, being there for each other and creating that space where and we don't have to be judged for it. We don't have to be something. You know, we can just be who we are and that's fine. Yeah. I think that's so important uh, and we forget how important that is and uh, just being authentic uh, yes. and being true to yourself and, and showing that truth as well, you know? Um, yes. So I, I have another question. Do others, do the same. Yeah. Well, yes. So when are we going to see your story in the magazine? Do you have an interesting oh, have story, to, story. Uh, to share have as have well? Yes. You know, I once told my, um, I told my Gita teacher, he's very, he's very dear to me. And I said, you know, they say we all have a novel or a book inside us. And I yeah, think yeah. I have two. <laughs> because <laughs> I've had, I've had a, a, a very eventful life. Uh, been through a lot personally and professionally. Uh, I've done a lot of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a comment from Ritu. Yeah, I know. It's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. And we all, I think we all relate to this. And I think it's not just um, daughters. I mean, daughters definitely, but you know, I've got two sons, you know, and I think yes, they still get sense. shown unrealistic images uh, that they're expected to live up to. Um, yes. Yeah, I think it's an issue that we've we've all had in our lifetime, and it's and it's definitely time for that to change. Um, I don't know if Linda or Pat or have any got any questions. Or Julia's got questions. I know Julia says it's her first time here. Um, not to worry, Julie. If you've got a question, just pop it into the chat and and we can talk about it. Um, where do you think the magazine will go in the future? Well, I'm, I'm open to anything that happens next. I, in fact, started this without a business plan. So I don't know where this is going. My family was like, you know, my parents, especially, uh, you know, they're like, you're starting a, a new business and you don't have a business plan. And I said, no. <laughs> so I'm just doing this because this is something I have to do because if I don't do it, then, um, you know, I don't want to die not doing it. So it's, uh, I've started it and I think I'm going to have faith and I'm going to leave it to the universe to tell me where to go next. And, uh, yeah, well, some people have shown in as a, a media marketing company that I'm meeting next week who want to tie up and, um, well, let's see how it goes. I'm, I'm completely open to that, but I think I'll be focusing more on the digital part of it on the website and on the digital magazine, because I've got a great response for that and really print media is dying out in India. So I don't want to focus too much time and effort and money and, you know, um, put in a lot in that, which is not really, it's not the future of media in India. Yeah. And I, I think that there's something fascinating, you know, about that. Um, and I've just lost my thread of thought. Um, well, you do um, have a question there. Yeah. I'll come back to it. Vanessa says, my 21 year old daughter is a model and she hates the stereotyping in this field and she's going to show you uh, the issue mag show her your ECU magazine which i think thank is you really, really thank good. you and, and pat says is there anything we can do to support you and the magazine no i just want people to read it so please share it and just 
have more and more people reading it. That's it. It's it's all for free, and I just want more people to read it and to know that something like this exists. And please refer to people to feature. You know, I'd love to interview people, and uh, you know, they can write for me. And uh, yeah, just need a lot of readers and writers. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, I yeah, I know. Have a question. Yeah, Pat, Pat has some wonderful stories to share, and I know Vanessa yes. does, and Linda, um, and I'm sure Julia and uh, has as well. So, you know, um, just, we'll, why don't you just put your contact details into the chat whilst we're, sure, we're sure. on that subject, and then people can get hold of you. You two say she's proud and happy to share your labor of love. Um, we agree, <laughs> we all, we're all happy to share it. Yeah, that's, that's my great. My yeah. So if you have a story that you want to share in New Delhi and all around India and worldwide because it's online, and then please get in touch with Aitka. And there's um, the, you'll find the issues of both the, the last two months, July and August, yes. at that, that link. That's correct, yes. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what would you um, give somebody maybe to a young lady like uh, Vanessa, uh, maybe she's in, uh, you know, a, 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 a young person who's interested in getting involved in magazines? Uh, sorry, for you, Vanessa's daughter, you mean? Yeah, anybody who's young who wants to get involved in creating their own magazine, what advice would you give to them? Oh, creating your own magazine. You know, luckily technology has made it so easy. So you have uh, this website called issue.com where you can create the magazine and put it up uh, in a digital format. And it's not very difficult. You need to have some graphic design skills. I've, I have hired somebody wow. to do that part for me. Uh, and uh, I create the content I'm, because I have, I've done magazines all my life. So it's, uh, you know, they say the true test of a vocation is the love of the drudgery it involves. And in my case, I love... Um, you know, putting the little lines and putting the captions and the commas, and I just love that part. So it's it's a lot of fun for me. But uh, yeah, if you have your content and you have good writers and uh, you have a you know a, a team of contributors and you have somebody to do the design for you, it, it, the technology makes it very easy to do everything else. You know, it you just upload the PDF and it's it's there. It's, and uh, WordPress is a fabulous um, you know place to host a website. And all these companies, you know, they've sort of tied up with each other. So it makes it easy to interlink them and to, uh, you know, to make, people can read your uh, digital magazine right on Twitter or right on uh, WordPress without leaving the website. So that makes it very convenient. And I don't think it's hard these days to uh, publish a magazine. You might need the skills to uh, do the, the, the editing or the writing or the, uh, the, des the design part. But if you have those people, yeah. The, the tough part is not uh, bringing out a magazine, but to take it out, bring it out every month, you know? So as yeah. soon as one issue is done, you're immediately going on the next one and who's my cover and who are, who's doing the you know adventure story and who's doing the challenges story and who's doing the food story. So uh, that's, the, that's the difficult part because you're lying awake at night and I'm like, I don't have a story for the relationship section. You know, so it's... Uh, that's uh, but it's exciting i mean i've i've done it before obviously i've done it all my life and it's it, it comes easily I, i'm going to address ritu's question uh, of course there's place to yeah. discuss sexuality in fact uh, in my in my second issue i have a i have a woman who's asked a question about having an extramarital affair and she doesn't know what to do because she her husband just refuses to acknowledge the fact that she's unhappy in the marriage so she's asked, we have a clinical psychologist on board now. So she's asked her what to do. And uh, well, I mean, that's a small, that's a small side of it. But, you know, knowing me, uh, there's going to be all kinds of subjects. There's going to be all kinds of women and uh, uh, all kinds of things. I just, I just need people who are willing to talk about it. That's it, you know, not to publish anything. <laughs> I love I love talking to you because we can hear the passion in your voice and you know you, and just before, just before we went live I said to you are you planning to go anywhere nice on holiday and you said no I've already hit the sweet spot just explain to everybody what you meant by that no yeah because I'm because I'm doing something that's so exciting and I really love it and it's such fun for me it's something I'm doing even if I'm not earning anything out of it but I'm still doing it because it's so much fun 
and I get to travel for work and people invite me to places and I get all expense paid trips anyway. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and I don't feel the need to take special time out from my life. And, you know, though I would do that too. I mean, I did that in May. I went for a spiritual retreat and it was, uh, it was a great experience. But at the same time, I would say I came back with the feeling that I didn't need to do it. It was fun. But uh, I, I think I have reached that sweet spot that I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm having a holiday, like working. Yeah. That, that's when you, you definitely know you've hit the sweet spot when you know yeah. that you're on holiday and you're working. Yeah. So we have another question. Do you want to ask, answer that one? Yes, that's right. A lot of people, yeah. Um, of course, bisexuality, yeah. I mean, I have a very dear friend who has written on the website about being transgender. And he, 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 was, a, he was a technical writer in, uh, in Chennai. And now he's taking hormone injections. And he's actually, he's actually a she now. So, um, well, she, she's trying to create a new personality, a new name. Uh, a, a new Facebook profile and she's written about it on the website about how you know how confusing it is and she's born in typical uh, conservative South Indian family uh, you know they you know they're only gradually trying to accept uh, who she is and uh, there's a, there's you know th we have a lot of issues in any society uh, we have issues of relationships and sexuality and when it comes to women freedom uh, freedom to work uh, you, you know it, it sounds very uh, weird to say this in you know 21st century urban India but most of the women I know they still have to ask their husbands for permission to work and um, yeah, yeah. and you know they take it uh, you know it's considered normal that my husband doesn't want me to work so I don't work uh, but she yeah. wants to work, so she she you know maybe she joins an NGO and takes up a voluntary job. Um, so uh, there are a lot of complex issues in society, and uh, we're we're really at the cusp. And the next generation will probably benefit from the questions that we are asking now. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, the next generation will benefit from that. And I'm I'm also hoping that the men in the next generation are going to change because they'll see their girls, uh, their girlfriends. Uh, age group, uh, you know, doing all these things without hindrances. So I'm hoping that the next generation is going to be different from us. Uh, but ours is, um, I mean, there, there's so many complex, uh, you know, so many things happening at all levels in society. There's so much to talk about. And there's so many things that you can't talk about. And that's what I said. I'm so happy to talk uh, about issues of sexuality, about issues of, uh, you know, bisexuality or you know interpersonal relationships uh, if somebody is willing to talk about it i'm more than happy to to feature them mm. yeah i think that's i think that's what i really like about the magazine it's um it encompasses um all sorts of uh issues that all as you said we, we all face mm. yeah, i wrote a little article about um, you know my first impressions of zanzibar and some of the issues that uh, we meet here, which are, are not issues that you would meet in the Western world, nor, nor in uh, India, for example. But uh, it was just an observation that I've made. Um, and it's something that we can probably all learn from. So that's great. Uh, we had two comments here, or maybe three. The, the, the chat's going mad, and I love it today. And so Vanessa says, it must be fun doing something you, uh, that you love. Um, and Rio says, I envy you all those expenses paid trips. And Vanessa said, again, it's fascinating to explore what makes us she, which I think is a really, you chose a perfect name for the magazine. And the last one is, knowing you, you will tackle all the complexities. This is for the others. I've worked with Aitka in the magazine as a contributor, and I must say, she gives writers a lot of space, and I must agree with her, she does. And Pat says, I can connect you to Anne-Marie, who spoke in Delhi about inclusion yes. Anne -Marie and diversity. Uh, Anne-Marie uh, had written for us in the first issue. So she wrote about her. Yeah. Uh, I met her in Delhi with you, with Pat. And uh, I connected yeah, yeah. with her as well. And she actually wrote about her experience in the first issue. So you, you may not have seen that. 
Yeah, and Vanessa says it's wonderful to, wonderful to be so inclusive, and Pat says excellent. <laughs> so where, where would I like to go with this conversation? I've got so much to ask you. Tell us a little bit about your two daughters and uh, where they're going at the minute. Where do you see their future in India? Uh, I, I don't know if uh, they would want to stay in India because uh, both of them have a desire to go abroad. Uh, my brother lives in the U.S. He's a U.S. citizen now. So they have visited him and they found, you know, life in the U.S. to be very wonderful. And, and I keep telling them, you know, it's not that easy as it looks, you know. And, uh, but yeah, that, they want to go there. And uh, so we've been actually looking for colleges for my elder one. She's, she's just started her final year of college. So she'll have to start applying for uh, higher education now. And uh, she wants to do something related to art, but at the same time, something that's useful. So maybe something like art therapy or maybe UX design, uh, you know, for uh, websites. So she wants to do something where she can use her creativity and as well, I mean, and also have a job that's lucrative. Um, and my younger one, one, she's doing economics honors. She's just started college. Uh, and uh, she just got her driving license yesterday, so she's very proud. Now she'll drive to college. Uh, and mum's terrified, but that's beside the point. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled, you know, because I was the only driver in the family so far. So now I have someone to drive me around. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, she wants to do sustainable development in the future. She's also very focused on what she wants to do. She also wants to go abroad uh, in the northern hemisphere somewhere, and uh, you know, in the Oh, North America somewhere specifically. So yeah, I have to accept that uh, they will be, you know, flying the nest very soon. Yeah. And um, we have another question as well. Um, you have a fan, apparently a fascinating spiritual journey. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yes, I joined uh, uh, um, this practice as a uh, well, it's based on um, it's based on uh, the teachings of 13th century Japanese uh, monk. It's called Nichiren Buddhism, and this practice uh, since 2004. And I I had um, just uh, started my first full time job, and I was in a very bad space in my personal life. I was uh, I was um, I was in my first marriage, uh, and. It, you know, a, a colleague at work at my workplace introduced me to Buddhism and introduced me to chanting. And um, that's where I actually uh, started my spiritual journey because though India is a very spiritual country, but because we were brought up in the Middle East, we were not really exposed to any kind of um, religion in our lives. Uh, I mean, there was just the basic, uh, you know, what we call puja, which is prayer that we would do on. Uh, Diwali or something like that, but uh, we were not really exposed to any kind of uh, organized religion. Um, well, Islam was all around us, obviously, but we were not part of it, so it was not part of our daily practice. And um, so, when for me, getting into Buddhism was my first um, my first exposure to um, something that is about um, a, a deeper purpose to life. And uh, well, there's been no looking back. I have been in this practice now for. 13 years and uh, I've introduced my family to it as well. I, you know, I chant every day and uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big part of my life. And what, um, one of the things about this particular practice is that we're very social. Uh, we meet a lot, we chant together, we chant for our friends, we chant for our family. Uh, we have a group where we actually put down the names of the people whom we want to keep in our prayers that day. So like if someone is going through a health issue or a financial issue or any problem at all, you know, and, and uh, so it, it's, it's very sweet. We're all there for each other. And when you feel low, you know that you can reach out to these people, even if it's in the middle of the night. And you know that you can tell them, you know what, just keep me in your prayers. You know, I just need some, I just need some good vibes right now. So uh, it's, it's a very simple practice because it's all about looking within. But it's mm -hmm. just as difficult because it's not easy to look within. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we go through difficult moments in life, we have a tendency to blame others and to, to look outward and to say, you know what, my parents did this to me or my husband did this to me or, you know, my children have, you know, ruined my life or 
my boss is terrible so it's easy to do that but this practice teaches you to look within and to see what is it in you that was triggered by this person and what can you do to change it and how do you change your responses to situations how do you react less and respond more um, so that's what this practice is about and it's about taking responsibility for your own happiness <clears throat> so that's something that i tell people a lot that you know you you cannot help your circumstances but you can you can you can completely help how you how you deal with them or how you what your attitude towards your life is so yeah so, yeah, so, so that's, um, that's been a part of my life and that's why ritu is bringing it up because it's 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 a major part of my life i've actually written a book it's called 100 paths a woman's search for god in the city and it's about the little um little instances uh from my day to day life where i i i would look for god in the little things like catching a bus or uh you know uh, you know the women in my building who would be gossiping about my divorcee with two kids uh, status you know so uh, i've written about those instances and uh how they changed me and how they helped me to grow how those uh, circumstances actually made me into a better person i'm just typing it into the um and a, a woman search yes i'll give you the link i've got i'll just give you the link yeah yeah if you've got a link even better yeah i'll just give i'll just i'll just get it to you I'm terrible at typing and talking at the same time. I don't know if anybody else has this issue. I can do one no, thing or the other, but doing both it's virtually impossible. Well, I'm just putting it in the group there. That's that's the Indian Amazon. So you'll have to probably uh, look for the other one. It's a Kindle book. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think if you click on the link, it allows you to, and um, uh, it takes you. It'll say um, you're not in India. You're in the US or the UK, and it'll move you on. So yes. it's no problem. Yeah. 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 So tell us a little bit about your wonderful husband. He's also a writer. He writes yes. his, his history, historical books, yeah? No, he writes on politics. Uh his name is Ulek and he's he write, he's the executive editor of a magazine. It's called Open and it's a political and cultural uh, weekly uh national uh, news weekly. But besides that he also writes books. So he has written on um Uh, he's written two books so far and he's working on his third one and uh, i like it when he like writes books because i get to uh, help him research and all these subjects are a little unfamiliar to me because i'm not uh, i'm not too much into politics and but because of him i have to sort of keep up with what's going on <laughs> so otherwise he gives me those looks you know like you didn't read the newspaper today and like it's depressing you know i don't want to read the newspaper like <laughs> so but so uh, yeah because of him i sort of have to read the newspaper <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i remember when i um i when i came to to visit you he wasn't too well but um i was fascinated yes. to see uh, how busy he was researching and uh learn yeah. and you know like you said uh, he's, he's been, always um, he's always, always reading we yes. have like yeah, i yes. think we have like 5000 books and they're just like lying all over the place like under my feet and everything so it's just a lot of books in the house and we still keep buying stuff so i just bought two books today myself so i'm both of us are like incorrigible book worms we have different tastes but uh, you know i i i learned to read different kind of books because of him because he's always reading about uh, osama bin laden and uh, you know about um, Genghis Khan and you know and I keep reading those books as well because uh, it's uh, it's fun for me to learn something new. Uh, many yeah. of them are very boring though. Yeah. <laughs> Rita just put I loved his first book it, it was very well researched but I couldn't read his second one. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah the second one was a little big. Yeah. It was about uh, one of India's prime ministers. It was a biography. So today so far in the midlife retreat um we've learned all about your new Ishi magazine and the passion behind it and why it's authentic full of beautiful uh, inspirational stories from women you've also told us about your sweet spot which is your magazine 
And you've also told us that um, the best part of life is to look internally. It might not be the easiest part, but it's definitely a choice and choices are the way forward. And you've told us about how important learning is and that we always need to be reading and learning new things. Um, I wonder if anybody in the audience has got any other wonderful questions for you. Let's see if they can type something into the chat. I'm sure that Vanessa's got something she'd like to know because Vanessa's also involved in the written word. Um, Linda okay. herself has just produced her, her own book Pat's always okay. writing content. So yes, I featured, sure Pat's have... I featured Pat's book. And in fact, um, Pat, I must tell you the stories at the end, you know, the women that uh, who have written their personal, uh, uh, you know, their journeys, it really affected me. And uh, I, in fact, I wrote about one of them in the, in the editor's note as well. Uh, I found, I found them, you know, it was for me, it was coming at a point in my life where I'm, starting a new enterprise, a midlife, and uh, it was just so perfect. It was about like, this book just kind of fell out of out of the blue on my lap. And then thank you so much. And I'm so glad I met you at that point, because it completely gave me that push, you know, that okay, let me just do this, you know, let me not be afraid. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, and I, I think it's um, um, exciting and fascinating what's happening at the minute and um, the people surrounded with in midlife are definitely changing yes. comfort zones and, and, and producing some amazing stuff. So exciting people, you know, they have so many stories. And in fact, all yeah. these years, uh, my magazines have only featured, you know, fashion magazines tend to focus on the age group of 25 to 35. Uh, so you end up with a, you end up interviewing people obviously who are in the same age group. And one of the main problems that I would face is that they've not lived enough to have something interesting to share, you know, and now that I have no age limits, uh, it's such fun because I'm, I'm meeting older women and wow, they've done some amazing stuff. So uh, I, I feel very liberated to be able to feature just about anybody. Vanessa, yeah, um, how do I choose how to feature in the magazine? It's um, yeah, exactly. How do you? <laughs> it's 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 something that I would like to read personally. I would like to share it in the magazine, and if it is uh, something that inspires me or changes the way I think, uh, that's something I would like to share in the magazine. So anything which shows me a new life and shows me somebody else's life, it gives me a glimpse into another woman's uh, existence, her challenges. You know what inspires her. Um, anything, you know, it, it could be, I mean, uh, this, this month there's a woman who's, um, you know, she's, uh, hearing impaired, but she's an artist, but she's mm. been hearing impaired all her life and she's never really heard, uh, you know, uh, her own mother or her parents and, uh, but she creates beautiful art and, uh, mm. it, it's to see, uh, get that little glimpse into her life is so, uh, for me, it's uh, it's dope, you know. It's so interesting, and I get to live so many lives without having to leave my own life. So, uh, anything that really um, it, it just you know opens my eyes and kind of makes me feel wow, you know, I didn't think of that. So, you know, uh, Ritu, for instance, you know, she she drove uh, across uh, Western India during the monsoon, and the monsoon in India is pretty crazy. So you have like huge rain today. I thought I'll go get my hair done, but I couldn't because it was raining so so crazily. So I just stepped out of the home and I was completely drenched. So the rain is like really, really, really bad. And uh, she decided to drive across uh, Western India in, in the rain. And that's pretty crazy. And for me, that's an experience that I would love to share uh, because there are yeah. women who are doing such interesting things and they should be written about. I, um, I've got some wonderful questions to ask you just to do with uh, being on a midlife retreat and they just need one word answers. So are you okay. ready for these? Absolutely. So my first question, I ask all my guests these and I get different answers every time. Every time. My first question is, what's the one thing that stresses you about going on holiday? What's the one thing that interests me about going on a holiday? That um, meeting stresses you. That stresses you about going on holiday? That stresses me is um, the packing. <laughs> and what's the one thing you always take on holiday? Uh, something to read on the flight. And what's the one thing you'd wish you'd left behind? 
I take too many clothes. So recently I've started leaving out more and more clothes. Yeah, decide to travel light. And what's the one thing you need to ditch right now, which is either mental or physical? Uh, I have too many inhibitions. Uh, I'm still uh, a product of my circumstances and though I'm trying to shed them as I go along, the, I, I still have a lot of inhibitions about being bold really and uh, you know, giving up my fears and taking bigger steps. I mean, I take small steps in life and uh, you know, I, I, I look at my older self talking back to my younger self and I, I feel the first thing she would say is like, take a bigger step. I mean, you know, you don't have to think so small, you can think big. So yeah, that's what I need to do. And the next question is, what do you, uh, what's the one thing you need to do, which is sensibly selfish, which means putting yourself first? Read. I lock myself in the bathroom and I read and everybody is banging the door down. Like, what are you doing there for so long? And I'm like, this is the only place I get privacy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I read a lot at the expense of everybody else, yes. <laughs> and what do you think was the worst piece of advice you were ever given at midlife? And you're allowed to say more than one word for that. What's the worst piece of advice I was given? Is to behave. Yeah, to behave <laughs> like a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for all those. And Ritu has another question before we go. She says, do you think you, you would have taken the plunge of produced a book even five years ago? No, I think when you have a lot to lose and you're in a full-time job and you know, you're uh, five years ago, I wasn't even uh, married to my second husband. Uh, so I was at a very precarious position in my life in terms of social standing. Uh, I think when you have a lot to lose, um, you, 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 you know, my book is a very, uh, it lays me bare, you know, it, it's everything about me uh, at the most uh, sensitive and at the most um, vulnerable points of my life. So, no, I don't think I would have been able to do it at that point, which is why it took me five years to actually bring it out. It's about that phase of my life. It's about the time when I was a single mother and um, the, the struggles I had to face as a single mother living in Delhi. Uh, and, I, or, you know, somebody who had a partner in her life and how I had to sort of hide uh, uh, him from everybody else. Uh, so uh, I couldn't have, I couldn't have made it public at that point. I can do it now because I, I can look back and, you know, it's, um, I think time puts, uh, gives you some kind of a cushion, uh, you know, it kind of blunts the, uh, the, the, even the pain that you may have gone through at that point. So I think everything happens at the right time, you know, there is there's the right time for everything. And just excuse me, I'm going to run out of battery. So I'll be with you in two okay. seconds. Um, but I agree <laughs> with you. I think everything does happen at the right time. And the right time for me right now is to just put this, this plug in. Hang on one second. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back and it should be working. But it's not. I might run out of battery in a second, but never mind. We've nearly finished. Has anybody got anything else they'd love to say to Eka before we go? Uh, Rita says, true, time is a healer. I think that's really good. It's been wonderful to have um, Vanessa and Pat and Linda and Billet with us and Ritu, of course. Vanessa says, thank you so much. Everything is so inspirational. Thank I you, agree. Vanessa. Fabulous to have you here. And I am definitely coming back to New Delhi to see you soon. Yes, please um, do. Even, even please Pat, do. Pat says I hope to see you again. So we will both have to come back. Then we can give you a hug in person. Yes. Uh, Rita says yes. thank you for this enlightening discussion, and she's going to log off. Uh, next thank week you. I'm going to be talking about the Camino de Santiago. Um, it's a yes. pilgrim walk of 700 kilometers in Spain, which I'm intending to do in a month's time. I'm hoping to have some of the people who have uh, done the walk and also some people who are going to be walking with me uh, on live. So please come and join us next week, Wednesday. Time's not been decided yet, but I'll let you know. And we'd love to see you there. Thank you so much for being with us, Aka, all you. the way from New Delhi. Thank and you. And I'm going to end the broadcast now. 
Thank you, everybody, for being with us. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.